Hi and welcome. This is Jim Ng. In this short video clip, today I'm going to talk about the hot topic of interest rate is going up. This is one of the very, very common topics on the ground. And I think a lot of people are very concerned about it. But what are the things that you have to take note if the interest rate continue to raise? What are the things that you have to look out for? So today I'm going to show you or share with all of you the five things you must know about the rising mortgage uh, rates. Right, so the first thing before we jump into what are the critical factors that you have to take note, um, this is actually a simple um, basic understanding on how the bank are coming out a different package. So today, most of the bank are using SORA, which is the Singapore overnight uh, rate as a basis to come out a different package for their loan. Right, so three months SORA is one of the very common um, basis that the bank, uh, majority of the bank are using. So you can see from here, 2022 January, this rate is only at 0.19%. But today, as of 24th June, well, the rate has gone up to 0.6%. So you can see how much the percentage has increased over the year or over a six months period. Uh, just a six months period, you can see there's actually quite a fair bit of increment in terms of the SORA rate in Singapore, right? And the next question we have to, I think a lot of buyers, they are asking me, you know, will the interest rate continue to raise or not? I mean, my answer is yes, it will continue to raise based on why I think we, I mean, based on because Singapore inflation rate is getting very high and not only Singapore, well, in fact, the US in the, the inflation rate has gone up, you know, a lot to 8.6% point. And that's actually uh, the um, faster increment or the highest since December of 1981 in USA, right? So that is quite a scary number. That's why to fight the inflation rate, I think one of the most effective way is actually for them to increase their interest rate so they can start to cool down the whole economy and so on right so that's what they are doing now and because the inflation rate is going up so fast right so uh, every one of the experts agree that interest rate will have to continue to climb to a certain stage whereby they are able to cool down the economy right to cool down the rate of the inflation before it can maybe stabilize in terms of the interest rate Right, so this is what the, uh, everybody are expecting. And come to Singapore, I think we are also at the uh, all-time high since uh, November 2011 for our inflation rate. Also, we are at about 5.6% point in the month of May 2022. So because of all this, um, definitely we will see um, interest rate will continue to climb. And... Um, these are the things that you have to take note in case if you are going into very big ticket items, uh, you are taking a loan or what, then we have to be very careful on the repayment uh, amount of money because you are going to incur more costs and so on. Right, so then the next thing I think a lot of people would be interested to find out is, you know, who will be the people or group, which group of buyers will be like most impacted uh, by this interest rate. I think there are two groups of buyers definitely will be affected by this new uh, or higher interest rate moving forwards. On those who bought a property, like maybe a few years ago, you take a loan and uh, right now the period, the lock-in period already uh, over, right? So uh, this, is, this is a time whereby you might want to do a repricing or even a refinancing for your existing property. Right, and uh, definitely you will have to choose which package you want to go and you are actually affected by this new interest rate. Right, the next category of buyers that will be affected will be those people who are intending to buy a property right now. Right, then definitely you will be based on the current interest rate to pick up uh, a package whereby you deem is more suitable for your uh, situation. Right, so these are the buyers uh, the group of buyers that I felt it will be most likely be impacted by this new interest rate. Right, so the next thing we want to take note is 
you know, fixed rate or floating rate. Well, it's actually a big debate on this particular uh, area. Right in the past, I think it's not difficult to choose whether you want to go for a fixed rate or inter- or a floating interest rate because both of them um, are quite close to each other. Right. So if they are very close, then most people make sense for them to go for fixed rate. But right now, I think the gap has been widening up. But floating rate become like so much cheaper as compared to the fixed rate. Right. For example, as of now, roughly we are talking about a fixed rate of two point five percent versus a floating rate of one point five percent. So there's a, at least a one percent um, kind of difference. It depends on the loan size as well. Right. Of course, some banks are still able to offering you a very good uh, floating rate of below one point five percent. It all depends on your the background, and of course the. Uh, the loan size that you are obtaining from the bank, yeah. So you can see actually there's like a one percent or more than one percent point of the gap between a fixed and the floating rate. So it make a lot of buyer actually entering into a very tough situation of you know which one to choose, right? So this is something that uh, is actually uh, concerning a lot of buyers in the market today, yeah. But if you actually look at the Percentage uh, difference, for example, a one million loan, thirty years, at one point five percent, which is the floating rate. We are talking about three thousand four hundred and fifty one dollars per month, versus a thirty years loan at two point five percent. In the quantum of one million as well, we are talking about three nine five one. So we there's a difference of five hundred dollar. Uh, in terms of the fixed and the floating rate, they say we based on a 30 years uh, period to do the comparison, right? So the amount will get bigger if your loan size is much bigger. Yeah, it can be quite taxing uh, if for some who have never done their financial uh, planning well, right? And what happened if a recession hit uh, the market and, you know, they lost their job? I think you will be in trouble if this thing continue to raise up in terms of the interest rate, right? So, planning and your financial um, stage uh, is very important to actually help you to decide whether should you go for fixed rate or floating rate. Yeah, I think this is something based on personal to personal basis. I cannot like, you know, say that hey, everybody has to go for fixed rate or everybody must go for floating rate. If you, if your health, uh, I mean, your risk appetite is not high enough. Right, you want a peace of mind. I think fixed rate ju- just makes sense because you don't want to take the kind of risk. But if you are buying, for example, a project under construction, I think it makes sense uh, maybe for you to choose the floating rate. Uh, anyway, they only offer floating rate, so it's still worthwhile for you to go in and buy if you have done the sum correctly. Right, for resale market, of course, um, it all voice down depending on your needs and your risk appetite yeah so um, to me I think I would rather take advantage on the low floating rate um, environment right now right because um, yeah the gap is actually so big and uh, really you know I can always do a a repricing or refinancing uh, two years later so you just have to be bear this in mind if you think that within two years uh, the interest rate is not going to overtake or climb higher as compared to the fixed rate. Then it makes sense for you maybe to consider floating rate. Yeah, so this is something that I think is um, uh, on personal basis, uh, on different situation and how you make up your decision, right? And the next uh, strategy actually is to maybe, you know, in case if the interest rate actually climb up, you can always do this move, like do a refinancing. You are able to stretch your loan tenure for another 10 years more, right? So that will help to reduce your mortgage loan. So this is one of the strategy that you are able to apply moving forwards. If you are in a situation whereby, you know, you find it very taxing to, to pay for the in, uh, installment. Yeah, so one way is actually to do a refinancing for your particular loan that you are having now 
Now, so this is the number four things that you want to take note. And the fifth thing that you want to take note is please do not over leverage. Yeah, I think uh, whether should we continue to buy property or we stop buying, um, this is a very important uh, decision. Yeah, but in my opinion, uh, Singapore is still a very safe haven for property investment. So if you see in the past, property and the uh, inflation rate, uh, property actually uh, appreciating much higher than the inflation in Singapore, right? So it really makes sense to own property because they are a, the property are able to hedge against our inflation rate. Yeah. So, so long as you have done your sum correctly, you have done your calculation, you have put in reserve fund, not only in your bank, but in your OA account as well. I think that makes sense um, for you to continue to look out for property because um, that is one of the best form of investment in Singapore and a lot of people actually love it because if you are buying property for investment, you are able to collect rental. So that is a very, uh, I would say, stable income, especially for a lot of retiree. They are able to pick up this amount of income eventually every month, right? And uh, one of the important thing that uh, why people love to invest in property is because we are able to leverage up to 75% of the valuation or the purchase price, whichever is lower, right? So our up, our upfront investment is only the 25%. Yeah, so that really makes sense. Because of that, our rental return becomes so high because our down payment is only 25%. That improves our rental yield, right? And property come with capital appreciation, especially in Singapore, I think it's very safe, right? At which point you buy, I think it's no longer so important so long as you have the ability to hold through the number of years, right? In case it come down one day, the property will pick up again. Uh, but of course, picking or selecting the right property is very, very critical, right? So make sure you buy the right property and uh, you don't end up yourself into a, a property whereby you don't see appreciation and the price start to, to come down, right? You might waste a lot of uh, years in waiting for the property to pick up again, right? So selecting the right property, of course, um, there is a strategy as well, right? So in case if you need to find out more, always approach an expert to, to give you some advice. At least they have some data to, do, to help you do all the analysis and so on. Right, so that is something important. Yeah, so please do not over leverage. But whether you should stop buying or not, the answer is no. If you have the means, I think property is still a very safe investment vehicle, especially if we are in Singapore right now. Yeah, so I hope these five points, um, five things that you have to take note on this rising mortgage uh, environment really uh, serve you well and you have gained a bit of insights from here as well. My name is Jip Ng. So if you do like my video, please remember to subscribe to my channel and uh, remember to hit onto the notification bell, right? So that when I post up new video, you are able to get notified. And uh, look forward to talk soon. Cheers.